Oh, hey there dudes and dudettes. I'm playing Earthbound. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Here. It's hard to talk about Earthbound. I could do the standard thing and review the game, or I could tell you about the history of the game, or I could try to convince somebody who's never played the game to give it a shot. The other option would be to just gush about the game. Even though, to you, the video is already made, I'm making this up as I go along and have no idea how it's going to come out. So stick around, watch the video, and let me know how it comes out, okay? It would probably be a good idea for me to start you off with some of the basics. Earthbound is a modern, turn-based RPG developed by Hell Laboratory and Ape Software. It was released for the Super Nintendo in the United States in 1995. The game didn't end up selling particularly well in the United States due to a few factors, including its $70 price tag. That was 40% higher than most going games of the day. That would be like a game today costing $85 instead of $60. Some people think that the marketing campaign This Game Stinks may have also had something to do with the poor sales figures, but given the fact that this game was marketed towards kids in the 90s, I seriously doubt that would be a deterrent. Even though the game didn't sell particularly well upon its release, it's developed quite a strong cult following. However, Nintendo seems nonplussed by that turn of events, and hasn't really shown Earthbound fans much love ever since the game was released. The history between Earthbound fans and Nintendo has been a bit of a sad love story, full of its ups and its downs. In the end, there isn't really anyone to blame for this sad situation. They haven't yet released Earthbound's successor, nor its predecessor in the United States, despite massive fan petitions with over 30,000 signatures. So that's kind of the short version of Earthbound's very long history. But that's not really enough to understand Earthbound and what it is and why it's got such a strong cult following. I mean, people get really emotionally charged when they talk about this game, right? So I'll try to explain that to you next. Earthbound isn't just a game to a lot of people. I'll speak personally here for a moment when I say that, to me, Earthbound was an experience. It was one of the very few games that I've actually gotten really emotionally attached to. It's a very personal game to me, and it's also got one of the greatest coming-of-age stories ever told in a video game. At the beginning of the game, it asks you to name all of your characters. It asks you your favorite food, what your favorite thing is. All of these things play really minor roles throughout the game, but it's these little touches that make the characters really easy to relate to. The characters in the game suffer from status effects that you can easily identify with like being nauseous, or getting a cold, or having your eyes so watery to the point where you can't see straight. I mean, Ness, the main character, develops homesickness, and he has to call his mom just to feel better. You see, Ness is also a kid growing up in the 90s. That's right, Earthbound takes place in the year 1990X. The towns that Ness walks around in and travels between are towns that you or I could have grown up in. Instead of swinging a sword in some forgotten medieval era, Ness swings a baseball bat. Instead of fighting monsters, Ness fights new age retro hippies or frenzied wildlife. You see, Ness is just a ten year old kid who's had the fate of the world thrust upon his shoulders. Because the game features characters that are so easy to identify with, it becomes a game that features your friends, your family, your dog. It features your neighbors, it features the crazy lady down the street that you don't like, it's 
features that crazy neighbor that is kind of creepy. Earthbound does this all in a really light-hearted way. The dialogue in the game was written entirely by the head of the game development, Shigesato Itoi, who is this really famous writer and renaissance man in Japan. Somehow, the humor of the Japanese version of the game was able to be translated and brought into the English version of the game, and it never really comes off as forced. But on getting off topic, the dialogue is whimsical. Talking to people around town doesn't feel like a chore anymore. The game was designed to give you the perspective of a child, and having the perspective of a child, you don't even realize some of the messed up situations that you find yourself in. Growing up as a kid, you didn't know about the worries of the world. Things like war, terrorism, child abductions, those things didn't even register, they were so distant from you. But looking back, there were a lot of crazy things going on in the 90s, and that's kind of how this game is. Playing through as a kid, Earthbound was just a zany adventure, but playing through it now, I'm starting to realize how messed up some of the situations were that I found myself in. I don't want to give too much away for those who haven't played the game, but for those of you who have, I'm sure you can think of at least a couple of things that were... off. Anyway, a recurring theme in the game is the failure of adults. As a matter of fact, this whole game could be summarized as a handful of kids going between towns, fixing problems that were caused by adults who were either corrupted by money or power, or were just negligent. And in a way, that's kind of an analog for what we'll be tasked with when we're done growing up. You see, that's one of the coming of age stories that I've come away with on my most recent playthrough. Adults make messes, and their children will ultimately be on the hook for cleaning it up. I know I don't speak for everyone when I talk about how personal the game was for me, but the other thing is that Earthbound is just a genuinely fun game to play. I mean, at first glance, it looks kind of like another Japanese RPG that plays like Dragon Quest. And on the one hand, that's correct. On the other hand, though, you'd be overlooking some serious innovations. The first awesome innovation of the game is the abolition of random battle encounters. All enemies you fight will show up on the main screen that you travel around in. If you see an enemy and you don't want to fight them, you can avoid them. But be warned, if they get you from behind, the enemy will get a full turn of attacks. On the other hand, if you somehow manage to sneak up on the enemy, your party will get a full turn of attacks to take the enemy out. Also, when you're stronger, enemies will go out of their way to avoid you. And, when you're stronger still and start a battle with them, the game will save you the time and just award you the win along with all the experience points and spoils. Another innovation is the inclusion of the spinning HP counter. When you're struck by an enemy, rather than taking the damage all at once, the counter counts down the damage. This means that if you are mortally wounded, you can have a friend heal you before the counter hits zero, saving your life. This becomes increasingly more important later on in the game when your fields deal massive amounts of damage from your more substantial hit point pool. Now, while some people have knocked Earthbound for having graphics that don't compete with Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI, I would argue that the game more than makes up for it in the audio department. The game may not have the absolute greatest soundtrack on the Super Nintendo, but it's definitely got one of the largest and most diverse. As a matter of fact, it's so large that that's one of the reasons that the game was so expensive when it was released. The game couldn't be fit on a standard 8 megabit cartridge. It couldn't even fit on a 16 megabit cartridge. The game had to be put onto a 24 megabit cartridge just to hold all of the music. That's because every boss battle has its own music, and each town has its own unique theme, and some enemies have themes that play specifically when you're battling them. And some people have argued that that's one of the reasons that the game hasn't yet been re-released in the United States. Or rather, that was. Until now. Very recently, Nintendo has announced that they're going to be bringing Earthbound to the Wii U Virtual Console later this year. This is excellent news for Earthbound fans, because we're finally being given another chance to show how much we are willing to support this game with our wallets. 
Now a strong enough showing here may be what finally convinces Nintendo to bring its other two games in the series to the United States. Over the last few years, the cost of Earthbound cartridges has been on the rise. I bought my copy back in the late 90s for about $25. A couple of years ago when I checked, you could still pick one up for about $80. However, as more kids have grown into adults with full-time jobs and therefore disposable income, the cost of these games has been skyrocketed. Nowadays, it's not unusual to see the game going for about $180 online auctions, or $200 at brick and mortar shops. The large strategy guide that came with the game has also been selling for about $100. Complete boxed sets are going for an upwards of $500 or more on online auctions. Now because of the recent news regarding the re-release of Earthbound on the Virtual Console, I'm not entirely positive how that'll affect the price. However, it is my estimation that we won't see the cost of the cartridges drop too much. So this concludes my video on Earthbound. Let me know how it came out. Let me know below in the comments. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. I want to know what you think. If I can do better, let me know how and I'll bring you better videos. If you want to subscribe, that would be so cool. Um, I would really appreciate it. Thanks guys.